back to another video for this series. So we're going to go over uh, wireless and cloud assessment tools. In our last video, we did a bit of enumeration, uh, but we'll get into the uh, to the assessment tools now. So uh, just just for a tidbit, uh, really quick, wireless. We want to understand that wireless network tools and uh, why we use them right now. Wireless networks have become quite common for personal and office use, of course. Uh, but the security of wireless networks just remains one of the one of the top issues, right? So we can actually use various tools to uh, to assess the security of a network, over, specifically in this case, wireless network. Uh, we can use actually various tools to try to crack the passwords from wireless networks. And um, contemplating if I should actually record this because last time YouTube had <laughs> had taken it down, and and uh, in, in in hindsight, probably rightfully so. But I'm still going to do a uh, just not showing how to do it, but just if you were to need it to uh, test something out as far as, you know, how uh, how well your your system or your network rather in this case is protected, I'm still gonna showcase a few things here. So first we're gonna take a look at an application called air cracking. So I'll find it here. Here. There it is. So it's a wireless network monitoring and password cracking tool. You can actually use it to assess the security of a wireless network, as I just mentioned. Um, we can also use it to capture uh, packets from a wireless network as well. So we can crack wireless protocols such as like WEP or WPA or PSK. And it could be used on different platforms like Linux, as we're doing now, uh, Solaris, Windows, FreeBSD, uh, OVBSD, and OS um, X as well. So it's capable of doing a lot of things, really. So it can monitor the wireless network, it can perform capture, uh, packet capturing, as I mentioned, and exporting the captured data into text files. And it can also perform a couple of different attacks as well. So like uh, PTW, WP uh, dictionary, uh, fragmentation, WPA1, and, and two cracking in WPA migration mode. So it can be used for testing wireless adapter cards and, and, every, and a few bit or other, <laughs> other things as well. So we can actually type, let's see, oh, doesn't want me to, apparently. Let's see. It, it, this just allows us to verify if the wireless adapter on our system uh, supports the monitor mode. It looks like it doesn't want me to type here. There it is. Okay. Oh, unexpected operator. Um, this means that the wireless adapter on our system just doesn't support the monitor mode. Unfortunately and unfortunately, right? And also another application we can use is Reaver here. All right, so it's another wireless pa password cracking tool, right? So it needs to have uh, two inputs, usually be SSID and, and MON. Uh, interface. So both of these can be captured with uh, the previous with air cracking here. And um, after we got both the details, we can actually uh, supply them. Uh, we need to supply them actually to the Reva tool, but to perform normally a brute force attack on a wireless router to figure, to figure out a password. So so just want to take a brief look at Reaver um, and, and open up the command prop. Now to be able to crack the password, you can actually enter in this right here, I think it's six. Yeah. But that's fine. Uh, it just the command, of course, is not going to work in a practice lab device. Uh, so, but if we were to try to crack a password, that would be the command that we would use. It's just an example. Um, now in the command, just to at least break it down, right? So the I, it just, it switches, it defines the, uh, the, uh, the mono or the mon zero, right? Actually, I think I did it wrong. Cause it's supposed to be this here. Yeah, yeah, I still get the same, same result. But nonetheless, so the I switch, it just defines the, uh, this, here, the mod zero, which represents the monitor interface, right? Now the C switch, it just represents the channel being used, which is um, here. And then the B switch, of course, represents the B SSID, which I mean, 
which I mentioned is required for it to be in use, right? So there may be times where we may need to obtain uh, hashes or we may capture hashes to set of passwords. Now, we need to find out, of course, uh, the passwords from these hashes. So this can be done without the, using a tool that can crack hashes. Um, and you can actually use old hashcat, uh, which is one such tool. So most of the time, a hash cracker, uh, they will use a CPE, they will use CPU power normally, which slows down the hash cracking process, unfortunately, and also the system itself. And OCL Hashcat, um, it'll just uh, use the GPU actually instead, the CPU, because when a GPU is used, it can actually perform a task at a high speed because it has more cores than, than a CPU. So GPU is normally has the capability of running several tasks in, in parallel without impacting the system performance. So, but anyway, all, OCL Hashcat has is, is, is now been uh, de deprecated really and no longer being updated. So it's now merged with another tool named just regular old Hashcat. It's released under the name Hashcat, which has a couple of different uh, key features as well. It's also an open source tool under the MIT license. So it can support multiple uh, uh, platforms, OSs like Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, right? So they can crack multiple hashes simultaneously as well. But <clears throat> actually, um, I believe I have Hashcat on here. Uh, let's see. Yep, there it is. I just forgot here. So we have another terminal here. So it can perform a couple different types of attacks, right? So as we can see, brute force, uh, also like hybrid dictionary uh, and mask and, and hybrid mask and dictionary as far as that combination uh, and combination also in straight uh, hash crack has cracking uh, various, you know, platforms, um, I'm sorry, algorithms, uh, like um, SHA-1, MD5, MD4, things of that nature. Other than this, it can crack passwords pretty much from many different applications, which use different types of algorithms for hashing passwords. So, uh, but yeah, those are the different uh, assessment tools that you can use to, you know, use any uh, sort of penetration testing techniques, right? So let's also talk about cloud models, right? So um, just private, public, hybrid, and community cloud. Just a, a brief, brief overview uh, that I, you know, wrote some notes on as far as uh, what they are. And it's going to be fairly quickly. So a private cloud, just infrastructure, right? That's implemented by a company using its own hardware and a specific computer. Uh, hardware needs to be purchased, implemented, and maintained by the company, and the computer hardware there needs to be procured by a company will typically consist of several components, including servers, uh, switches, routers, and this may have a massive uh, financial impact on the company. And it's just uh, used to create a pool of computer resources, which can then be accessed and utilized by the company. Also for public cloud, uh, with the public cloud infrastructure, the computer resources are procured, implemented, and maintained by a third party provider, uh, for example, Microsoft, and the computing hardware is situated in data centers across the world and is accessible through the internet and can be accessed by anyone who has purchased these specific resources or services, right? And also the hybrid cloud. So it's an infrastructure of a combination of a public and private cloud with the services that are provided are shared between the different infrastructures. Now the private and, and, and public infrastructures are connected to each other through the internet to ensure the resources are available. You also have things like the community cloud, which is not, isn't used as much, but it's the infrastructure that refers to the shared cloud computer resources that are shared between a set of organizations that have the same uh, business goals for us. Now, as far as uh, cloud assessment tools as well, so from small to large, a lot of organizations, uh, they started to realize the benefits of using uh, the cloud environment, right? So now they're adopting a more cloud-based uh, infrastructure. So this, it's it's important to understand that uh, the, the, the infrastructure environment has to be secured carefully, right? So there are several tools to do this, right? So you also, you have TACU, which is mainly designed for security professionals uh, who want to test AWS uh, security, right? And they run with a modular architecture that uh, can be used in pen testing. So uh, one of these is because uh, PACU, which is P-A-C-U, it's an open source application, right? Uh, as the one in the prior videos that I've had is fairly avail freely available, I believe, on GitHub. Uh, they can actually work on Mac OS and Linux environments. So it just covers the entire penetration lifecycle, um, penetration testing lifecycle, I should say, like reconnaissance, uh, persistence, privilege, escalation, uh, log manipulation, things of that nature, credentials uh, being compromised, or things of that nature, right? So you also have a Scout Suite, 
which is also an open source app as well. So where Paku is so focused mostly on the AWS environment, Suite uh, Suite is focused on multiple cloud environments, right? So you can perform security testing with AWS uh, on Microsoft Azure, uh, Google Cloud Platform, uh, some of the even less to know was like Alibaba Cloud and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, but it it doesn't, Scoot Suite uh, at least doesn't, Scout Suite doesn't uh, necessarily penetrate uh, the cloud environment. It just uses APIs um, to, that are provided by cloud service providers with the data collected from the APIs, right? And it performs a manual inspection of them and then identifies the risk potentially that may exist within that cloud environment based off of that. So we can actually, uh, won't allow me in this uh, lab environment, but uh, typically what I would normally do, I would install Scout Suite and then I would install it using, uh, I would need a PIP and also Python. Um, so I would use that, I would get to clone the, uh, the application from GitHub. So I would pl place in a, 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 a a web address that has it, and also part of the web address that I would type in would, uh, it would uh, know that I have the command for it to clone what's in the GitHub. So I would just run a command, uh, pipe install uh, and virtual, and then a few other things as far as navigating to the Scout Suite directory and uh, getting the virtual environment ready and then activating the virtual environment itself. I would also need to install some dependencies and run a few commands. So I would get the environment ready pretty much to start using Scout Suite. Uh, so before using a specific cloud service provider's infrastructure for testing, I, I, I would check to see if I can get their permission beforehand, of course. Uh, but for example, AWS does not require permission, a uh, prior permission as it only uses API uh, calls to collect data, right? So, but with AWS, right, I just need to have the valid credentials to create an account in, in the identity and access management. So this account I create would only have the audit permissions, of course. Then you also have Prowler, uh, which is another open source tool that we can use with the AWS environment for security assessments. It knows going to be the CIS based AWS account hardening tool. So it can help us perform various assessment tasks like security assessments, uh, audits, continuous uh, monitoring, and um, forensics readiness and things of that nature, right? So Prowler is pretty similar to Scout Suite, right? Um, as far as what it does, um, it just to, it, it verifies the permissions, right? So it can be used for sending alarms. I've done that before, and I'll actually showcase that in another video, uh, which can get triggered if there is any suspicious activity within the infrastructure in the AWS environment. So to install it is pretty similar uh, to Scout Suite, installing you know, Python and Tip and things of that nature and a few uh, commands uh, to get the environment ready to use Prowler. Uh, but that that is all for wireless and cloud assessment tools. Um, again, uh, we did a great job on enumeration, did a great job with the cloud assessment tools and wireless assessment tools as well. And I'll see you in the next video on vulnerabilities in specialized technology.